This is the driver's side floor mat in my car, and this is the problem it has. It just slides freely, it doesn't stick at all, and as I'm driving around this thing can just turn in all directions. It's kind of dangerous actually. It, it could actually flip up and get over the, over the pedals, and so what is the problem here? Well, the problem is underneath here, there used to be little nubs of material and that what, what it would do is it would grip the carpet and keep it from sliding around. Well, those little nubs have broken off. There is this little piece right here, a little hook, and that sort of hooks it, kind of. It keeps it from sliding a little bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't grip for long. It, it, it soon lets go. We have to figure out a better way to keep this carpet from sliding all over the place. Your typical passenger car vehicle is going to have four floor mats, two in the front and two in the rear. Now, most of the time, the only seat that's being occupied is the driver's side front, and therefore the driver's side front floor mat takes the bulk of the beating, and the other three floor mats are going to be just fine. So we're going to flip this guy over. You can see all those little nubs, that's what I call them, are broken off. So it's just basically a flat surface. All of these little spots here, that's where there's supposed to be a little plastic nub. And what they do is they kind of grip the carpet and keep this thing from sliding around. So for comparison, we will look at the passenger side. Now you can see what these things should look like. These little nubs, these little protrusions of plastic, they grip the carpet and keep this thing in place. Now this floor mat is fine. It doesn't need to be replaced. The other three floor mats are fine. The logical thing to do then is to replace this floor mat, but unfortunately they don't want to sell you just one floor mat. They want to sell you an entire set. So rather than replacing all four of the floor mats, is there anything we can do to modify this floor mat to restore its grippiness? Here's one item for sale on Amazon. It's called the Eagle Claw. And you can see how it works here. These little grippers dig into your carpet and these little devices attach to your floor mat and then these little grippers attach to these devices. An interesting device. It probably should work. However, I've got a problem with the $21 price tag. This is, after all, just a dirty old floor mat from a 15-year-old car. I'm not sure I want to put $21 into a floor mat. Here's another variation on that theme. This is a set of four clips for your floor mat. It comes from this company. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Is it Azerone or Azer One? I don't know. But it's a similar arrangement here. You have these round disc-like devices that punch through your floor mat. And this is what the top of it looks like. This is what the bottom, it's got this big nail here. This is what digs into your carpet. That's kind of what it looks like put together. And it provides you measurements. The best thing is the price. Now this is only $8.39. Now I think I'd be willing to put $8.39 into my dirty old 15-year-old floor mat. This item is being sold under several different brand names. Here's another company selling the same device under the brand name Auto Expert. In this case, it's $11. Here we have yet another company selling the same device. The name of this company is Young Fly. And in this case, they only offer you two of them, but, but the price is only $5.98. And you could possibly get away with only two of them. Here's, here's the same device again under yet another name. In this case, the name is Dicray Universal Fixing Grips. Just a little close-up there. And you can see it's the same device. Again, close-up of the device, top and bottom. In this particular case, they offer you eight of these, and the price is only $8.99. There are multiple examples of the same device available on Amazon. I went ahead and got the Acer One four clip set. There's a better view of that nail, and this is how you put it on your floor mat. You got to punch a hole in it and then screw it together like this, and that's kind of what it looks like when it's put together. So I went ahead and ordered one of those devices from Amazon, and this is how it came just a simple box. It contains four of these gripper devices, each one in its own separate package. 
No instructions, however. But fortunately, the listing on Amazon had enough information on it to where I could see how these would be implemented. We'll go ahead and take one of them out of its pouch. Here's that little nail device which digs into the carpet to hold it in one place. These are the two little devices that clip to your floor mat. So this device goes into the carpet, this device goes into the floor mat, and it holds it like so. And then this little device here can actually turn and locks it into place. Just a close-up on this little nail device. This is what hooks to your carpeting with this. Now this nail is three centimeters in length. So you basically determine where you want this thing to end up. And that'll be usually by lining up with this device already in the floor mat. When one set's lined up, you then want to back this needle up by three centimeters. Okay. And that's where you want to end. You want to push down and enter into the carpeting material or, or beneath it and then slide it in. And this, this should allow you three centimeters forward slide. And when you do that, it should then line up with this piece. It's already in the floor mat. Put the floor mat on the floor of the car, and then take this piece and back it up by three centimeters, dig it into the carpet, and slide it forward. And that, that should line things up. I'm gonna place the first device here to where the driver is sitting. And here's that little hole where that hook goes through. So I'm gonna put this on the opposite side of the floor mat to it. And we have to put a hole through the floor mat in order to mount this thing. Some of these floor mat device kits come with a, with a punch that you can just sort of punch a correct size hole. This kit did not provide us with one. So how big a hole do we need? It's just almost exactly three centimeters or 30 millimeters. In order to create a three centimeter hole, I need to start by marking out a three centimeter circle. I think we shall start here. Yeah. Let me get this started with just a simple knife here. Now there's any number of ways you can cut this. Let me just go back to my serrated knife. Okay, we're pretty well cut through the rubber mat, but we got a lot of problems with the carpeting part of it. Let's just cut them with a with scissors, perhaps. Maybe that's fairly good. Okay, then this goes on, this one goes on this side, this piece there, and this piece goes on the other. Got to really press those down. This part here, that nail digs into the carpet. And then the floor mat goes over this piece, like so. And you can you turn that and that locks it into place. That's not going anywhere. Okay, that's how that works. We got in the first one. After marking the three centimeter circle here, it occurred to me there must be an easier way to do it. And I thought, well, how about just use a, a socket? This is a 23 millimeter socket and it will make a three centimeter circle if you take your marking pen and go around it. So much easier. Okay, I've gone ahead and put in a couple more of these fittings. Here's the first one we put in, and here's another, and here's another. That's on the uh, underside. And on the top side, one, two, and three. And we're going to try it out in the car. I'm now going to put the floor mat back in the car. 
I've got the piece with the nail already in it and it's locked in place. I'm doing that just to sort of line everything up. And we've got this original hook right here. We match up with it. That's about right. And now we can see Now we know it's going to be about there. So let's go ahead and stick that nail in there. And let's see how close does that come. Okay, that's good. That should work. Now we look at the next one. Now with the car mat in the car and the needle piece and the carpet piece inside of the floor mat piece just to line it up. Okay, so now we pull this back out of the way, but keeping it in one position. That's the final resting place where we want it. So again, keeping in mind that that needle is three centimeters long. One, two, three centimeters. And we dig that needle in. and then slide it three centimeters forward. And that should just about line it up if we did it right. And there it is, pretty much lined up where we want it. And then you turn this little piece and that locks it into place. Okay, good. Now in the case of the third one, I'm gonna place the nail facing in the other direction. Now the nails, when they're facing in this direction, that prevents the mat from sliding forward, which is usually the problem, but it could also slide backwards. So I'm gonna place this nail going the other way to prevent the, the carpet from coming in this direction. And then the third piece, laying the carpet in place. So that's the final resting place of the carpet piece. Let me pull this back. In this case, I'm gonna have the needle pointing in the other direction. Okay, and then you have to move that needle three centimeters one two three and that's where you dig in the needle and slide it down and hopefully that will line it up okay now that now all three of them are in position and locked in place and that should do it I'll try driving it like that for a while and see if there's any problems. Otherwise, it looks like we're done. Okay, I've been driving this for a couple of weeks now, and I've been having trouble with this thing. It keeps, it's come undone a couple of times. These little nails, they pull out. It seems that the carpet sort of slides back and forth and it works its way out and then it just becomes completely loose again. Now in the case of this fastener, in the case of this fastener, the nail actually pulled out of the device too. Maybe I can glue that back in. When I put this in, I put the nails from this one and this one pointing in this direction and the nail on this one pointing in this direction, sort of hoping it would lock itself in. So if it slid, you know, this way, this one and this one would tend to prevent it from moving. And if it tried to slide this way, this one would pre prevent it from sliding. Now, part of the problem is that is since there's a curve here, there's built-in slack. So I think I'm going to try this again, but I'm going to this I'm going to move this fastener down to say here, and maybe that will hold it in place a little bit better. I'm going to use my 23 millimeter socket again to draw a three centimeter hole. And now we'll go ahead and cut that hole with our serrated knife.
the kit came with four fasteners and I only used three of them so I have one left over. I'm going to go ahead and use that fourth one now. But it turns out it's really pretty tough to get these things out once they're in. You know, once you have one in like this it's really hard to get it out so rather than risk breaking it I'm just going to go ahead and use this fourth one. You have to get it all the way down. This device won't go in fully and it can't lock. There's three rings you should see. This thing should be at the third one. This little edge there should be at the third one. It's got to be all the way in. Okay, so now we can place that there. Flip it over and lock it in place. Okay. So we have the four fasteners in. This is the fourth one I just put in. I think I'm going to try having these two nails pointing towards the front of the car and these two nails pointing towards the back and I'll see if that can't lock this thing down. Okay, I've got the floor mat put back down again and we now have all the fasteners back in and this is the, this is a new one we put in here and this is the originals, this one this one and this one and this is that hook that comes with the car right there. Let's see if that change will hold this thing in place a little bit better. Okay well we'll give it a try and see if it works. Here's a six month follow-up on our floor mat project. It's still holding in place. It hasn't gotten loose once. We did have a little problem here. It pulled through. This part, this retaining part, pulled through the floor mat. Perhaps I made the hole a little bit too big. Now we can remove that. We have to turn this and we can get that part out. But in order to get that back in, we're going to have to separate these two pieces. And that's going to be difficult. They're really locked together pretty tightly. Okay, I've got it here on the bench. It's made of two pieces that are snapped together. It's going to be hard to get those apart. I'm sort of afraid I'm going to break this thing if I try too hard. It has these little tabs here that are dug into all these, these grooves along the side. I have to push this back a little bit without breaking it. It really isn't made to be fixed. Let's see if I can try one of these super tiny screwdrivers. Let's see if I can get underneath it. Okay, I've dug it under here. Let's see if I can move it. <clears throat> I'm afraid if I push this, I'm going to end up breaking it. I'm going to see if I can't just sort of stuff it back in. I'm going to see if I can't work it back into the floor mat somehow. Now let's see if we can get that back in there. See if I can't work this thing in. Kind of force it in there. Okay. All right, that's got it. Get it to line up. Okay. And turn our little knob. Okay. It's back in. Okay, so this thing has remained in place relatively intact for six months, although we don't drive this car a great deal. Now, would I recommend this device? Well, I would recommend this device if you have an automobile that is very old, that you don't want to put a lot of money into. This might be a good solution if you run into a, the problem of a floor mat with all the little nubs worn off and it's sliding around. This this does hold it in place uh, and it is the cheapest solution I could find. I would however note that it was a fair amount of work to put all, all of these things into place and they do have some problems as you just saw. These things can pull through. Also the little nails underneath can pull out if there's any looseness at all and the nails themselves can pull out of the fixture also. 
I, I would say if your time is worth more than minimum wage, I would recommend just buying some new floor mats. You can buy floor mats for just the front of the car. It would be nice if they sold them just for the driver's side, but I haven't seen any. You can get some decent replacement floor mats for the front of the car without spending a great deal of money. And if you have a car that you're going to keep for a while or that is worth a significant amount of money, I think that's the way I would go. If I were to do this over again, I don't think I would do this. I think I would just buy new floor mats. But in a pinch or in a situation where you don't want to spend a lot of money, this does work.